So if you are recently learning Golang, you might have not known that Golang maps are not concurrent safe, meaning that a map is not safe to read and write from multiple goroutines at the same time. So in this video, I'll quickly show you how you can make your Golang applications actually more concurrent safe by using sync mutex and something called vertical sharding. So let me first demonstrate to you the problem and then we'll go over the solution together. So let's say we're building some sort of a distributed cache. So in this example here, we have a type cache, which can be here a map to anything. And then here we have just a simple constructor. But the most important thing is here this uh, get, the set and the delete, so the crude operations. And they are very simple, so they are a bit overkill for these methods. But you can imagine that here we are just accessing the value, we can return it. And here we have the setting. Um, you can get the gist of it. So this implementation here is very simple. I think the most complex here is the keys. So here we map over all of the keys in the map and we just return for the user. Uh, and here is a working example of the cache. So we can initialize this cache, set multiple values to their values. And here you can iterate over the keys. You can also access each key individually and check if it exists or not. You can also delete and all of that. Now, I'm going to show you uh, why this is going to be a problem. So let's take a look at this test here. So here we are initializing again the cache and here we are looping 10 times and we are creating a new goroutine for each time, which is going to set a new key and value. So what's going to happen is that multiple goroutines at the same time are going to be creating and accessing the map at the same time. So this is where we should have a race condition. And the way that we can test if this is happening a race condition or not is that we can run our test. So let's go ahead and do just go test. Uh, I'm going to select every test here. I'm going to say that it's verbose and I'm going to add the special tag, which is going to be the race condition. And if we hit enter, we should have this error here, which basically means that Golang found here a race condition. And that is because a Golang map is not concurrent safe to use. Now, let me show you how we can actually fix this in the first stage. And then I'm going to show you a problem on that solution that most people recommend, which is not really, um, it's going to be a problem if you go to production, but I want you to be aware of that problem so you can actually implement an even better solution by yourself. So if accessing the cache or the map is unsafe, what you can do is start by locking when we either get or set a value in the cache. So first, let's uh, refactor this to be a struct. Then here, I'm going to call this data. And then we're going to add the key component, which is going to be a read, write, sync, mutex. Basically, what it does is it's going to protect our data here. So the cache here is going to have an embedded uh, read, write, mutex. So now we can actually use it here on the methods. But first, let me change here the constructor because we need to initialize this data, just like so. And here, let's implement our our mutex but first let me make these values pointer values otherwise the sync mutex might have problems with it and so here on the get the first thing that we need to do when accessing a key is that we are going to do a read lock so let's go ahead and do m dot lock so it's going to be the read lock and then we can just defer and unlock after the read has been completed so it's going to be a read unlock and here we need to change this to be the data and just like so, we are limiting the flow of the access to the gets. Now here on the set is going to be very similar from above, but instead of doing a read lock, what you're going to do is going to be just a normal lock or a, a write lock. So here it's going to be m.lock and let's just defer the m.unlock as well. Just like so. And here it should be the data. Now the delete is also going to be the lock for the writing because we are modifying the data structure. And here on the contains, it should also be a read lock because we are actually accessing the data, we're not modifying it. And on the keys as well, we should do that just like so. Okay, so now let's try and run the test and see if everything is still working as planned. So let me first just run the test like so with the verbose. And we can see that it passes. And if we use the race condition, it also passes. So this means that we actually fix the race condition and this is how you can make your going maps safe. Now using something like this works but causes a problem because as more requests come in, more concurrent requests are coming in, the process is going to spend 
more time waiting for the locks to be unlocked and this condition here is called lock contention now in this scenario the locks that ensure the fidelity of the data can also start creating a bottleneck when the processes start spending more time waiting for the locks to be unlocked than actually doing their job. Now, while this might not be a problem for 90% of the use cases, because you can simply just scale the number of instances or servers. However, this also increases the complexity and latency as distributed nodes need to be established and the cost increases as well. Now, how can we take this to the next level? Now, an alternative solution for solving the log contention around shared data structure, like this distributed cache, is called the vertical sharding, in which a large data structure is split in two or more, each representing a part of the whole. And yeah, if you think about this, it really makes sense because we are dividing our problem into multiple uh, smaller problems. So that way we are reducing the surface area of the lock contention for just a single map here because we have multiple ones, multiple shards, where we can localize the effects of locking. And what this means is that there are going to be multiple shards and each shard is going to have its own map. So whenever we are accessing, for example, here the X, we need to find which shard contains the X. So for example, this one here. So we can just lock this map here and get that value while another concurrent request might get the J. And which means that J could be on another shard and we don't need to wait for this lock to be released. We can just move on. It's going to be faster and more efficient. Now let's build the sharding solution and see how this works. So the first thing we're going to do is change this cache to be a shard. So this is going to be just a little piece of the puzzle. And then let's rename our cache to be the shard map, which is going to be a slice of pointers to shards. Then here, let's also change the signatures, going to return a shard map. I'm going to also call this a new shard map as well. So in this implementation, we're going to receive a number. So this number is going to be the number of shards that we want our cache to have. So the, then what we do is that we initialize the slice with the number of those shards, and then we loop over that number and we initialize an empty data structure like we did before. And then we just return the shard map created. Now here for the implementation changes, it's going to be a bit similar, but there is the step that we need to do, which is if you remember here, now we need to find which shard is the key located at. So we need to implement that part. So let's create here a function called get shard, which is going to be a method here as well. Now in this function here, we need to know where is the index in the map. So what you're going to do is create another function to get that index. For example, let's call this get shard index and let's create it here. So here, the first thing that we do is that we are going to hash our key so that whenever we hash the same value, it's going to produce the same output. And then we are going to pick an arbitrary hash of this key. For example, here, I'm picking the first byte of this checksum because the checksum is going to be a 20 bytes a slice. We don't need all of that. We can just pick one and then we need to get the module of the length of the map. Now, the reason for this module here is that we need to be kept inside the range of the map. For example, let's take a look if we had the number 137 from the hash and we module this by the length, for example, 10. We know that we are going to be on the index 7 and we can change this number to anything. And we know that we're always going to be inside of the bounds of the map. Now here on the get, now that we got the shard, all we need to do is lock the shard instead of the whole map. So let's just do that change like so. And here we also just do shards.data and we can access the data inside of that shard. So this is the first implementation change that we need. Now the rest is going to be very easy because we already implemented that infrastructure there. So here all we need to do is of course get the shard. So let's copy this function here. We can actually just, uh, let me just copy this here because it's going to be a different type of lock. So here just to shard, shard, and just like so, we do this. So for the delete, it's going to be the same thing here and for the contains as well. Now the tricky part comes here to the keys. So I'm going to show you how we can actually do this concurrently and save. Well, let's first create here our keys slice and then let's create a sync mutex because we need to synchronize the way that we're getting them. And for that, we also need a weight group here. You're going to see the reason for this. And here we need to add the weight group on the length of the keys. So it's going to be the number of keys and the number of times that we need to wait for it to be added to the slice. So then we're going to loop over the whole shard map and we're going to get access to each shard. And then we're going to create a new goroutine for each of them. 
then the first thing you're going to do is that you're going to create a read lock inside of the shard. Then you're going to loop over all of the data inside of that shard. And then we can start the mutex.lock here. And then we get the keys inside of the slice. And finally, we say to the lock that we can unlock it. After that, you can do the same thing for the shard lock. And then we can say to the wait group that this shard here is done. And finally here, we wait before returning. And that is how we implement the keys. And here is the adjusted example. The only change here is the constructor. We are passing in a number. The rest is going to be the same. Now let's go back to the console and run the tests and see if everything is still working. So let me just go here and do the tests. And here we get the error because I forgot to adjust the test. So here we need to do the new chart map. And I'm going to say, for example, 10. Let's go ahead and try again. So we can see that the test has passed. So we can still avoid that race condition while creating this sharding solution. Now, let me show you some logs of what is happening. Basically, what you're going to do is check the index of the map that this key is going to be created, meaning that it's going to be inserted inside of one of those shards. So if you're in a test in the verbose mode, we can see where are these keys being placed inside of the shards. So for example, key 5 is being placed inside of 2, and we can see that some of them are being overlapped in the same hash map. We can see that the 8 and the 7 are on the same map 4, and for example, the 3 as well, the 6, and here the 1. So basically, we have finalized and implemented our solution. Now, this solution is a bit overkill for most applications, but if you are going to production and we need really need that concurrency and the locks are being a problem, this is how we can actually solve that. So if you want to learn more about this topic, this is a book that I have recently read about distributed systems in Go from Matthew. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and you learned something in a way as well. So if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. As well, if you're looking to learn more about Go, there is a link in the description to join our free community. You are more than welcome there. So see you on the next one.